All right, good evening and welcome to the Hanson Select Board meeting. Tonight is September 5th and this meeting is being recorded by Whitman Hanson Community Access Television. Please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Um, Mrs. Rain, may yes. I prevail upon you to read the public announcements and upcoming meetings? Yes. We are looking for citizens at large to become members of the following committees. Board of Health, Bylaw Committee, Cable and Internet Committee, Capital Improvement Committee, Cultural Council, Energy Committee, Historical Commission, McQuan Property Reuse Committee, the Memorial Day and Patriotic Observance Committee, Nathaniel Thomas Mill Committee, Recreation Committee, and the Zoning Board of Appeals. Volunteer applications may be found on the Tom Town's website, www.hanson-ma.gov, or by calling the Select Board's office at 781-293-2131. Hanson Day will be held on the Town Hall Green on September 16, 2023, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m., with the rain date of September 23rd. Local churches, businesses, and civic organizations will be in attendance with free demonstrations, games, crafts, and food. Come see all Hanson has to offer. Upcoming meetings, Select Board, September 12th, 2023. Select Board, September 26th, 2023. The October Special Town Meeting is on October 2, 2023 at 6.30 p.m. at the Hanson Middle School, 111 Liberty Street. Okay, thank you very much. Um, next up, right. oh, we at 6.15? All right, I'm gonna have to put my tap shoes on for a couple of minutes. Um, because our hearing isn't scheduled until 6.15. Um, so let's hit the new business, Regional Agreement Committee representative. Um, at our last meeting, Ms. Green mentioned that um, the Whitman Hanson Regional School District, one more time with feeling, is going to convene for the purposes of finalizing the Regional Agreement. And as such, they require a representative to the Regional Agreement Committee. And Ms. Green had asked us to take that into consideration. And if anybody felt particularly passionate um, about this subject or even mildly passionate or perhaps just inclined, um, that they would offer up uh, their uh, role in uh, joining this committee. So did anybody um, feel so inclined? How often do they meet? Uh, they meet on Mondays at five o'clock. Um, probably once, once a month, maybe uh, twice a month, if there's uh, if there's um, items that need to be discussed. Okay. All right. Did I mean we do need a representative? All the committees I'm on either meet on Mondays or Tuesdays, so there's not enough Mondays in the uh, in the calendar. Yeah, I work on Monday night. Um, I wonder, Ms. Green, may we inquire about flexibility of meetings? Uh, I can, I can, I can inquire. Okay. Uh, but I know most of. The I realize we are just one voice, but yep. we do need to have a seat at the table. So I would hope that some consideration would be given um, to perhaps being flexible about the day of the week that um, the meeting is happening. Uh, would you mind circling back with those folks and uh, letting us know? Absolutely. All right. And in your folder um, is a little note uh, from Paul Clark, who has been tirelessly running the Damien's Freaky 5K road race for I don't even know how many years, a lot of years, and he's done a fantastic job doing it with no incident. Um, oh, 13th annual. There you go. Um, so um, they are asking to approve uh, the annual Damien's Freaky 5K Road Race, which is going to be held on Sunday, October 29th, um, starting at Damien's Pub. Um, and the race will start and, and uh, located at 270. The race will benefit. It doesn't really say where it's going to end, but it's no, 5K. It so it starts. Uh, but I, I know in the past, Chief Mix has had no concerns about this, uh, has felt that they were very compliant with everything that was requested. He already said that he has the approval of the Hanson um, PD and the Hanson um, Fire Department. So um, 
Ms. Green, I would, not that I'm questioning Mr. Clark, but I just, out of an abundance of caution, um, would um, ask that you circle back and verify um, that, you know, that uh, both chiefs are, are A-OK -okay with that. Um, and contingent upon that, I will entertain a motion to approve uh, the Damien Freaky 5K road race on October 29th. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. OK, fantastic. Um, and then we got notice from the uh, Board of Health that uh, they had voted to appoint Arlene Diaz to the transfer station task force. And accordingly, since it's our task force, we too have to vote to appoint her. So I will ex entertain a motion to appoint Arlene Diaz to the transfer station task force. So moved. Second. All in favor? Okay. Uh, we also received the resignation of Scott Davis from the Facebook committee. And I would like to add that for a number of years, um, with very little thanks, um, Mr. Davis um, was the lone voice of, of the town of Hanson um, on Facebook. Um, and at now that we're moving towards having a new website where a lot of those updates are going to be automated uh, and where we've also hired our part-time administrative assistant, part of whose role will be uh, social media. Um, I think Mr. Davis um, has decided to resign. So um, I will entertain a motion to accept the resignation of Scott Davis from Facebook committee. So moved with regret. Second with regret. All in favor? And thank you, Mr. Davis. Uh, okay, I got five more minutes. Let's see, what can we talk about? Committee updates? Uh, we could do committee updates. That's a great idea, Mr. Weeks. Did you have any? Nope. Oh, okay, you're just <laughs> being controversial. Can I say okay. something about the Economic Development Committee? Yeah. You know that you guys have a website that is linked on the town website? Uh, what, what is I'll the I'll have website? to find it for you. All right, yeah. But, you but can... literally, there's a link there to an economic development website. Interesting. I'll, I'll find like it. you're saying, well, we you have our own it, economic I'll... development. Yep. Okay. Well, that's a first for us. I wonder if that's something new. No, um, I think I don't think it's been updated for a long time. Is it the Hanson Business Network um, I don't know. website? I don't okay, because that's a separate animal, similar but separate. Um, okay, well, thanks for bringing that to my attention. Um, we, speaking of Economic Development Committee, um, we really, really, really aren't accepting anybody else for um, our upcoming Hanson Day. I, I said this starting like three weeks ago, and then I said, oh, all right, people were coming and you know giving compelling reasons, and and now I'm absolutely maxed out, and we can, we just can't um, can't accept anybody else. So we're up to like 60 um, participants. Uh, but it's going to be off the hook. We're going to have food trucks, um, of course, Hanson Fire, Hanson Police, Hanson Highway. Um, we've got uh, the Plymouth County Sheriff is going to be doing the canine um, unit demonstration for drug searches. Uh, I believe we've got fingerprinting the farm from uh, Plymouth County, 4-H, Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts, um, Oh, okay. American Legion, Plymouth County Beekeepers, uh, Board of Health, Library, and the list goes on and on. Um, it is the Hanson Business Okay, Network. yeah, so it's different. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. yeah. Um, so, um, so anyway, uh, that is September 16th from 11 to 2, um, with the rain date of September 23rd from 11 to 2. We're hoping we don't have to do the rain date. Um, we're going to have a DJ. Um, there'll be fried dough. The Rockland Lions are bringing a truck that cooks fried dough. Um, essentially, no healthy food choices will be available, Good. but you can come there knowing that um, <laughs> and plan accordingly. Um, so, um, anybody else have um, any any committee updates? Okay. Um, so I think now you guys have got a full contingency for the task force. You can stop popping again, right? Yeah, I mean, we were waiting until after Labor Day to be yeah. anyways. And um, so once uh, I think we get the first week of school, because um, Mike and I have kids in the school who are just waiting to kind of get a routine going, oh, pick it up again. You know what? I did have something rather sad, but I did want to mention, <coughs> perhaps people have seen um, that our poor little Lucy, our therapy dog, um, uh, last week um, was, uh, was um, you know, put to sleep. And um, I know that you guys all join me in um, 
you know, sending our condolences to the police department and specifically to Officer Harrington, who raised Lucy, trained Lucy, spent all kinds of hours with Lucy, and whose family also um, was involved in raising Lucy. And uh, it's such a heartache to lose her um, at such a, a young age. Um, and although uh, there is a replacement dog, truly, I don't think that another dog will ever be as zen and uh, relaxing and wonderful as Lucy was. Um, and um, so anyway, our condolences, heartfelt condolences to the um, HPD and to okay. Officer Harrington on that. Um, okay. And um, similarly, uh, I don't have the official write up here, but we've learned today that John Norton passed away. Um, and anybody that knows John knows he was involved in so many different things, um, including he was a registrar, um, various committees on all kinds of committees in town for years, um, he along with his wife, Patty. So um, we send our condolences to Patty and to her son um, and daughter-in-law and grandchildren for the loss of, of John. And he will be missed at town meeting and, um, and you know, in the, in the halls of town hall. So... Um, all right, I don't mean to be a Debbie Downer, but I, those two things were actually on my mind. Um, so with that, we are approaching 615, which is the layout hearing for Alden Way, Gray Lane, and Stringer Lane. Um, just as a prefatory comment, this is really um, just sort of required. We're going through the protocol of doing this. We've already done this the last time that this was on our town meeting warrant, um, but it's required um, anytime we have this type of an article in a town meeting warrant for us to have um, a layout hearing. So um, I will entertain a motion to enter the layout hearing for Alden Way, Gray and Lane, Gray Lane and Stringer Lane. So moved. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Okay, Aye. great. Um, so, uh, please be advised that the select board for the town of Hanson is holding a public hearing pursuant to general law chapter 41, um, C81 and C82 today to consider the layout and the select board's intention to lay out for possible acceptance as public ways the way is known as all the way, gray lane, and stringer way. Said ways are more fully described as shown on a plan entitled Definitive Subdivision Plan of Alden Way, prepared by SciTech Inc., 13 Welby Road, New Bedford, Mass., 02745, dated April 22, 1997, last revised on July 14, 1997, and recorded with the Plymouth County Registry of Deeds as Plan 803 of 1997 and Plan Book 8040, excuse me, pages 652 to 659 as modified by a plan entitled Modification of Definitive Subdivision Plan of Stringer Lane, prepared by SciTech Inc., 13 Welby Road, New Bedford, Mass., 02745, dated February 3rd, 1998, and recorded with the Plymouth County Registry of Deeds as Plan 701 of 1998 and Plan Book 41, page 706, and as modified by a plan entitled Modification of Definitive Subdivision Plan of Gray Lane, prepared by SciTech Inc., 13 Welby Road, New Bedford, Mass., 02745, dated November 20th, 1998, and recorded with the Plymouth County Registry of Deeds as Plan 20 of 1999 in plan book 41 page 956 any and all abutters to the list of roadways are strongly encouraged to attend the public hearing and provide comments plans are filed in the town clerk's office at 542 Liberty Street Hanson Mass 02341 and as you will recall um, the article that we have on the upcoming October town meeting warrant is merely a um, correction of a I call it like ministerial um, error um, in the article that was passed at the May town meeting for which we already had a layout hearing. Um, so since we are here uh, for a hearing, I will open it up for public comment. Did anybody have any comments? No, just kind of came to see how things work. We appreciate that. <laughs> This is new for us, too, and we hope that we never have to have a second layout hearing for anything like this. Um, so that's our, 
our fondest desire. Um, so we'll just give it a couple of respectful minutes because it's a hearing. So, Ed, did you sense. have something? It, it, it's mentioning a few different books and pages from previous decades. Is there new? Is there a new book and page no. for this that we're not doing? Not yet. No. Okay. And then not yet, as there will be. Yes. Okay. Um, after, thank you. Um, after all the uh, formalities have been done. Yep. Can I make the motion and, and get it seconded, and then we just kind of leave it open for discussion until we, because everyone's going to do that anyway. Sure. Okay. Perfect. Would you mind? Yeah. Um, so I move to accept the layout of Alden Way, Gray Lane, and Stringer Lane to become public ways as shown on a plan entitled Definitive Subdivision Plan of Alden Way, prepared by SciTech Inc. 13 Welby Road, New Bedford, Mass. 02745, dated April 22nd, 1997, last revised on July 14th, 1997, and recorded with the Plymouth County Register of Deeds as Plan 803 of 1997 and Plan Book 40, pages 652 through 659, as modified by a plan entitled Modification of Definitive Subdivision Plan of Stringer Lane, prepared by SciTech Inc. 13 Wolby Road, New Bedford, Mass. 02745, dated February 3rd, 1998, and recorded with the Plymouth County Register of Deeds as Plan 701 of 1998, and Plan Book 41, page 706, and as modified by a plan entitled Modification of Definitive Subdivision Plan of Cray, Cray Lane, prepared by SciTech Inc. 13 Wolby Road, New Bedford, Mass. 02745, dated November 20th, 1998, and recorded with the Plymouth County Register of Deeds as Plan 20 of 1999 and plan book 41, page 956, copies of which are on file in the office of the town clerk. I'll second it. Lovely. Well done, sir. I used to be afraid to read in elementary school while out. <laughs> well, you seem to have gotten over that impediment. We're proud of you. Um, okay, so um, we'll just... Um, we're not going to vote on it today, you said? No, well, no, we, we are going to vote on it. Did you know some show tunes? We need to fill a little bit of time. I don't know. Um, was there any, anything else that people wanted to? I, I think that this is just, uh, just to reiterate, this is something that the town already voted on at, town, at the last town meeting. Just clerical errors resulted in us wanting to make sure we got it right so that the people get what they were asked uh, yes. or, or asked us to do, which is accept these streets. So... Um, it's a bit of a housekeeping. It, it, uh, yeah, housekeeping. Yeah. It's really more of a housekeeping issue. So, but I think we all support it, and we we're going to support it at the October town meeting. Yep. Well, we yeah. In fact, uh, that's a good point. We did um, we did vote to place it, and um, we haven't voted. To I think we even voted to support that one. Actually, yeah, it's yes. one of the few we did yeah, just we because now, yeah. there wasn't uh, you know wasn't we didn't feel like FinCom would really feel any kind of way if we had voted on that. We usually do try to wait to um, support or not support um, and see what our FinCom has to say as our gatekeepers on the financial situation, but we made an exception with that because we felt uh, pretty strongly about it. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, I'm feeling fairly comfortable that um, we have stretched this out to the longest possible um, time possible. So I've got a, a motion and a second. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, great. All right, great. So uh, that uh, then I will entertain a motion to close our hearing on so Alden Way. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. All right, fantastic. Okay. Um, so that brings us to, thank you, ladies. Unless you want to stay around, we've got a lot of other exciting things. Okay, all right. I understand. Thank you. Um, we'll see you on the second. All right, so October special town meeting warrant review. Ms. Green. Hi. Uh, members of the board, Madam Chair, Vice Chair, what we have in our packets is the most updated War, uh, special town meeting warrant. Uh, it was approved by town council over the weekend and um, printed out this morning with updates. Uh, there are still some articles that we're waiting for additional information um, or for further town council review. Um, but to point out some updates in the uh, town meeting article, now we'll, 
do you want to go through every article again, or do you I just want to go to the ones? I think if you can just hit what's changed. Yes. Um, and my thought process is, let's back me into required timeline. So we're at the fifth today. Yes. Um, I know that um, Miss um, McDowell had given. Um, had had a discussion with Mr. Sullivan from FinCom, who's the chair of FinCom, mm -hmm. about what their time frame might be for making recommendations. And I think based on that, she's going to go to print on the 15th. Yes, actually, um, the Finance Committee is meeting this evening. I've provided Great. them with copies of the warrant um, that have the explanations in them. So they are meeting this evening. And so that kind of brings me to what I was about to say, which now makes sense, so that's a good thing, mm -hmm. um, is I'm thinking that we should wait until we have their recommendations next week, at which point we then should decide whether we're going to recommend or not, unless yes. people feel very strongly about doing something in advance of that. Okay. I just think in the past we haven't had the luxury of having things to FinCom in time to have them make a recommendation and have us respond and take that into consideration. Um, do you think there's any way we might be able to invite somebody from FinCom um, to kind of give us a little color commentary where we might need it next week? Sure. Okay. I mean, if they're available, it would be helpful to know why they supported or didn't support something because it might, um, you know, it might, it might um, kind of change our minds or at least give us something to think about. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, if you want to hit the high points of anything that you've changed, that would, I th think, be the best place to start. Okay. Um, so Article 1, I, I just want to bring to the board's attention, um, I received a, a bill today from one of the departments that is a past fiscal year bill, so um, we will be adding that to this uh, Warren, I, I tried to add it today, but Lynn has it locked in a way that I couldn't add anything to it. So next week you will see an additional um, un past fiscal year unpaid bill on this. And who is that from? From the police station for about $316. Okay. okay. Um, Article 2, uh, we had discussed last week, the administrative assistant to the select board position is now back under uh, Section 11C, part-time positions. It is now number FF. Uh, Article 3 remains the same. Um, that has the planning, uh, town planner salary increase and the transportation for the two um, agricultural high schools. So that, that's remained the same. Um, Article 4, we just went through. Um, Article 5 is capital, remains the same, no, no changes. Um, Article 6, no changes. Article 7, no changes. Um, Article 8, no changes. 9, no changes. 10, no changes. Um, Article 11, no changes. 12, no changes. All right, wait, wait, oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh. On 12, is it 12? No, keep going, I'm sorry. Okay. I'm, I'm, behind my, I'm, I'm behind flipping. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> Article 13, no changes. Um, Article 14, um, I gather we are still waiting That's on one, yeah. town council right. um, to have a discussion with the uh, chair of the Community Preservation Committee. Should we so. have that sooner rather than later? I, I believe a conversation did happen with the chair of Community oh. Preservation, but I have not. Um, I, don't think, to the I don't think we've gotten a formal update from either of those parties, so if you could circle back with them, that would be awesome. Yep. Thank you. Yeah, well, I'm watching that. Um, okay, so Article 15. 15, the board, uh, the board, both the wage and personnel uh, and select board had um, voiced their um, suggestions and recommendations that the town administrator be removed and wage and personnel and select boards be um, inserted and that both these boards need to approve any um, vacation carryover. Uh, Article 15 addresses um, al allowing an employee through the approval of both the Wage and Personnel Board and the Select Board of carrying over up to 10 days vacation. Uh, of course, there would have to be reasoning that would be proffered to the, both boards for this um, request for the carryover, but the language has been updated to remove town administrator and insert Wage and Personnel and Select Board for approval. Okay. Um, so that is what we have on Article 15. 
Um, Article 16, again, um, the language, the town administrator has been removed. Uh, wage and personnel board and select board have been inserted um, with language to uh, deem basically the approval of both boards um, for this and also additional language um, at the bottom uh, kind of addresses the um, discretion of the boards um, with authorizing granting any existing employees additional vacation days uh, based on the best interest of the town um, and a decision of both wage and personnel and select board shall be a final decision and shall not be subject to any grievance procedures so they just they kind of hit the highlights um, with this language and why did we put in shall not be subject to any grievance procedure because wouldn't it only be subject to a grievance procedure if it's a position that is under the union contract? Yes. I think that language um, is for that. But they, they well, it, it is under, it, it is basically, um, it was suggested or responded to by the union that this here is for non-union personnel, but they probably have this language in there just as a safe, um, just to be safe. Okay, I mean, that's um, fine. I did have one little tweak um, in the explanation. Mm -hmm. um, the, um, it's in order, at the last sentence, in order to be competitive and retain employees, this, I think it, it should say amendment, okay. also provides flexibility oh, yeah. to the. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so that's um, Article 16. Uh, let's say Article 17, no changes. Uh, 18, no changes. 19, no changes. Uh, 20, no changes. 21, no change. Uh, 22, no change. Uh, Article 23. So there was a um, concern expressed regarding the language um, with going back to prior May 2023 line item. Um, and basically, because the Camp Kiwani, the line item was was um, removed and is now a, a um, earned, reten earned retention type of um, budget line item, that's why that language was, was formatted that way. But to just make it way easier and easier to understand, what we did was we uh, added simple language, um, 50000 to be added to supplement Camp Kiwani salaries. Yeah, that's so beautiful. So easy, yep. easy to understand. Um, and then the explanation provides the reasoning for it in, in which salaries they are looking to supplement. I love it. Simplistically beautiful. So language change on that. Yep. Um, Article 24, uh, this was the change from the, this is the, the brickwork at the library. So they had requested the amount be increased from 10,000 to 20,000. Um, actually, we're still waiting on some language changes on this. Um, our Charlie Baker met with um, Corinne Cofado today at the library to further discuss this. So I fully suspect within the next few days, I will have some language uh, tweaks on this explanation and the article. Okay. Okay, to provide to the uh, to select board for next week. But the dollar amount isn't changing. The, dollar the fundamental the rationale same. is not changing. Yes, correct. Okay. Correct. This is different than what we had before. This is slightly different than last. Yeah, it is so, slightly different. Yeah. It doesn't it's, say it's something cleaner. about like the. Yeah. I don't know. There was something that Ed and I both felt had a little bit of a violent reaction okay. to the last time, but yeah. it's not. And that's been end. removed. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Um, Article 25 has remained the same. There's no changes. Um, Article 26, no changes. 27, no changes. 28, no changes. Um, article 29 remains the same, and then Article 30 remains the same, so no changes. So th those are the highlights of the changes and updates for this most up-to-date um, special town meeting. That warrant. wasn't there something you thought you might need to add? Um, the, the, unpaid, the, the unpaid bill. No, um, I think there was something else that you mentioned to me last week. Oh, that was the, it was the transportation. 
um, for the agricultural high schools. Okay. Um, so we have we have one line in Article Three, um, line item number two is for Norfolk Agricultural High School transportation, um, and then line uh, oh actually that needs to be number three. Um, sorry, that needs to be re renumbered number three. Um, is for the Bristol Agricultural High School. So we added that um, transportation cost in here as well. But I think that was added last week. That's um, in both boxes, right? It needs to be changed to three. Yeah, both boxes yeah. need to be yep. changed to three. Yep. Um, so that's been added in. Um, the looks like the Norfolk Agricultural High School, that amount for transportation is going to remain based on most current information that I've received. From um, Ms. Green, I think it had to do with insurance and Camp Kiwani. Oh, yes, yes. So there was a, um, so the insurer is requiring a plot map with um, all of the structures at Camp Kiwani indicated on where they all exist. We did receive another quote for about $7,900, but in the interim, um, our town planner was did come across a map of the property that had little blocks that indicated where the structures were. Um, and the insurer indicated that they would accept that. Oh. So I did send it to them on Friday, and I'm just waiting to see if they accept it. Um, the Camp Kiwani Commission is still um, considering having the plot map done, um, but we did receive that much lower quote, which brings it to a completely different threshold, um, and it's much more reasonable cost uh, for So you don't think we need to add or not? I don't think we get, okay. at this point we All need right. to add that. Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> long winded great. answer to okay. that. Okay, great. That's <laughs> good news. Saved us eight thousand dollars. I was going to say another win by Mr. DeFrance. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Um, okay, great. Um, all right, uh, with that, um, any, any strategic planning update? Have we reached out to, to um, Ann to make sure that she's available? And um, I have not yet, but I'm going to put that on my schedule okay. my, uh, so you can get to um, Okay, great. Uh, then that brings us to Town Administrator Report, Ms. Green. Okay. All right, Madam Chair, Vice Chair, and members of the board. Um, well, since last Tuesday, not a whole lot has happened um, in my office other than like routine day to day. So I thought I would really just recognize um, and talk about grants a little bit more. So at our last meeting um, in my town administrator report, I, I, I noted that there were two grant writers um, that basically in town hall. However, we have um, more grant writers in the town. Yes. Um, we have our, um, our police, fire, library, council on aging, conservation and health. Um, all of the department applied for grants um, for their departments. Um, and the town sees a great benefit from the efforts of these talented department heads in applying for the grants. And just to, to hone in a little bit, um, our Hanson Library has applied for and received $44,590 in cultural council grants. Um, our Hanson Fire Department has applied for grants and has received $61,148 for training, equipment, and youth cardiac screening. Um, Hanson Police Department, Safe Road to School Grant, Municipal Road Safety Grant, $20,000 per year um, for those grants. Bulletproof Vest Grants are $11,000 in the Comfort Dog Grant. Um, again, all of these benefit the town in a number of different ways. Um, highway Department, very instrumental in securing the grant funding from Mass DOT for the repaving of County Road, uh, a portion of Franklin Street and Main Street. Um, that, could, that would cost the town upwards of $2.5 million to mm -hmm. do that work. Um, so, you know, the project's meant to prolong the roadways of an additional 10 years. Um, but that project is still underway. So, uh, Mass DOT, basically, they grant funded engineering supervision, construction um, of all of that work. And it's still underway, but uh, much better than what we had. Um, Council on Aging, um, they, our director there applies for grants um, and she's received the funds to add personnel to assist with the increase in need for services for our elderly residents. Um, you know, the town, I know that there's questions on Facebook and things like that regarding grants. I can ensure every resident out there that these department heads are talented, they're dedicated, 
they apply for these grants. We don't always get them because they're competitive in nature. So we hope for the best. Um, but they've, they have secured a variety of grants for the town and they continue to apply for grants and seek out grants. So um, again, um, the town's fortunate to have these talented and dedicated employees on staff. I want to recognize all their efforts they put in for these grants and the town benefits 110% from all these efforts. And I do want to mention it's a huge increase in the number of grants that we're receiving in the last, I'd say, four years versus mm -hmm. the 10 years before. Um, and, and I, but I'm wondering, um, is there any way that we can kind of, without over-engineering, I don't want to kill an ant with a cannon here, but um, is there any way that we can um, come, have some consolidated database or list of, of grants or something like that? Because it's hard to wrap your mind really around if you think about all of the dollars that we're getting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and that doesn't even include earmarks that we're getting from, you right. know, from the state, you know, for various projects. Um, so uh, if, if, again, you know, if it's not a Herculean task, if there would be some way to kind of like canvas that. I no, now with the addition of Emily, and we'll be so. able we'll be able to get these together. <laughs> okay. um, you know, not to Good mention answer. the um, the uh, tip pro the tip for the McLean Street, the thirteen million. Yep. Um, you know, that has been a that's been a team effort with the select board's office, with town planner's office, um, with our police and fire. Um, that that's been and, and our legislative partners as well. That that's been a very a team. And effort. I know Robbie O'Brien's got money to buy equipment. It, well, I mean, yes, like, exactly. Yeah, yes. I, well, what, and I don't think people really realize, you know, how much when when you mm -hmm. look at it in the aggregate, it's kind of astounding, honestly. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, you know, 10,000, 11,000 here and there may not really sound that, but when you put it all together, it's a fairly it's, good it's chunk a lot of, of change. Money. Yeah, it's yeah. a lot of money. And, and, you know, and, and Council on Aging, to add the staffing, um, our, our director, Mary Collins, has noted the increase in the services um, for the elderly residents. So this extra staff is... Um, helping to fit that need. That's awesome. Um, also, too, I'm reporting uh, the asbestos abatement at McQuan is complete. Um, the We will be seeing fencing put around the building. The playground is officially closed um, because the demolition is going to start in the next week or two. Um, we're going to, the windows, I guess, I, I hear, have been um, removed from the building. So um, in a few weeks, we're going to be seeing goodbye to McQuan. And I think there were some questions, you know, could geez, you know, it's the only playground in town, blah, 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 can it, you know, could you guys fence it off? But I think it really gets to a safety issue with right. all the heavy equipment and, yep. you know, the unpredictable nature of a demolition. I don't think we want to um, risk anything. anybody's little, you know, any little people being harmed or anybody Absolutely really not. being harmed in the process. Yeah. So. I mean, just by the Proximity to the building, you know, demolishing th materials fly. So no, unfortunately, we, we cannot. Um, yeah, we, we can't risk that. Um, thank you, Madam, Madam Chair. Uh, do we know when or how about how long that's going to be closed for? Is it just a matter of weeks, or is it the whole project? Well, or? hopefully, if the weather continues to cooperate, um, I, I'd say maybe two, three weeks, maybe. Oh, um, if the weather doesn't cooperate, could could bring it out. But you know, they're working to to make this part of it quicker but well um, just to be clear mr hill's question yes so two or three weeks for the weeks. demolition yes when will the playground be reopened as soon as they're able to clear okay. it and, yeah. and make it safe okay. for, for and maybe people a little to, bit after that yeah and for people, people um to sure be able people people to walk and yeah. yeah not trip and fall over everything mm -hmm. because they yep. are going to flatten it out they're not getting rid of the playground no 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 no, no absolutely not that's the, at the, no. At the Foundation of the so, yeah, yeah, no, no, playground's not going away. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, the students are all back in school. Um, drivers out there, please be careful. Um, and I just wanted to also announce that um, Dollars for Scholars Great Pumpkin Classic Car Show is com uh, coming up really quick, October 8th, 10 to 2, um, at Whitman Hanson Regional School District. Um, the It's $15 per family or $5 per person. Um, Ten dollars per show car, and all the benefit, all the benefits um, proceeds go to the dollars for scholars for Fort and Hanson. And we also want to wel welcome Emily Scrag. And welcome Emily. Emily. Today is her yep. first day. So, uh, yep. Very happy and excited to have her on board. Yep. 
Um, okay. Um, with that, I will entertain a motion to adjourn to executive session. So moved. Um, and executive session. Um, Pursuant to open meeting law, Chapter 30A, Section 21A3, to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining or litigation if an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining or litigating position of the public body in the chair so declares, building litigation discussions, administrative professional union. So following through on the adjournment, um, I've got a motion in a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And um, I will entertain a motion to enter executive session for the reasons mentioned before. So moved. Second. Okay, roll call vote. Aye. 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 And we are entering executive session. We will not be returning to open session. Thank you.